Hello viewers and uh, welcome to another episode of Reminiscences. Today we are in Jos, uh, at the home of uh, Dr. Samuel Anjuma Ghani, who is a veteran civil servant, having served in the governments of northern Nigeria, also at the federal level before he started moving closer to home, Benue Plateau State, then Gongola State, and finally retiring as a permanent secretary. And then he moved on to become into politics, uh, where he became the first deputy governor of his home state of Taraba, where he continues to be a community leader from southern Taraba. Uh, at, the, at the national level, he is active in the Nigerian Christian Elders Council. So we'll hear all about his experiences. Uh, Dr. Ghani, welcome to Reminiscences. And we normally start with where you started your life. I believe this was Wukari. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your early training and growing up in Wukari? Well, um, I come from Wukari, mm -hmm. and uh, I was born 88 years ago. I started um, my education in Wukari Elementary School. In those days, each native authority had an elementary school. And uh, when I was at the age of going to school, I went to Wukari Primary and uh, in those days in each province there used to be a middle school mm. and these middle schools were upgraded mm. to secondary schools mm. after the completion of the elementary school I went to a mission prior, senior primary school. Mm. Still in Wukari? In Taku. In Taku. Wukari division. Mm. And uh, from there, I went to clerical training school. Mm. That was in Zaria. Mm. It used to be clerical training college, mm. CTC. Mm. But later, when the Institute of Administration mm. came into being, uh, it was it was a course run in the Institute mm. Institute of Administration. <coughs> And I did a clerical course, and at the same time, I was reading uh, uh, A-level, mm. what you call it, by correspondence. Mm. Uh, that was from 52 uh, to 56. Mm. After the CTC, I went back again to do the advanced uh, course, we had a diploma course mm. in Native Treasury Accounting. Mm. That was the highest mm. course in the Institute of Administration. Mm. And that was in 1958 mm. to 59. Mm. I did the clerical course in 1956 to uh, 57 mm. in a diploma course. 59 and 58 to 59. Mm. 
Then in 1960, I did the administrative service training course, mm. popularly known as um, ADO course. Mm. And after that, I was posted to the Ministry of um, Animal and Forest Resources mm. in Kaduna. Mm. In 1962, mm. I transferred my services to the Federal uh, Civil Service. Mm. Why did you do that? Were you not well, happy in the Northern Service? No, well, there was a request mm. from the federal government mm. to transfer some seven officers mm. from the North mm. to the Federal Civil Service. Mm. And I was invited, mm. actually, for an interview. Mm to transfer my services mm. to the Federal Civil mm. Service. And that is why I applied. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the Northern Service of those days. We've all heard stories about how civil servants were dedicated, were united, and the system worked. W what made it so? Well, in those days, the civil service, or the Northern Nigeria Civil Service, was governed by rules and regulations. Mm. And civil service conducted themselves mm. in accordance with established rules mm. and regulations. Mm. And in those days, the civil servants particularly in the administrative service, mm. which is the elite class mm. of the civil service, mm. um, were dedicated. Mm. They were men of integrity, mm. men of character. Mm. They set good examples mm for serving officers, mm. for other subordinate officers. Mm. And you see, because those top civil servants mm. who were members of the administrative class mm. assisted the government of the day mm. in the formulation mm. and implementation of, uh, of the government policies mm. and they should show exemplary character. Mm. But sir, why, was it because you are such a small cadre of very elite, trained and well remunerated people? That's why you, that was why it was special because as far as I can see, we still have rules. The civil service is governed by rules, but the rules are not obeyed as they were in those days. Well, in those days we adhered strictly to the rules and regulations. I'm trying to find out but why. But today... Well, why is it that you were able to do it? We were acting according to the dictates of our conscience. Hmm. Most of us, if not all, hmm. came from Backgrounds mm -hmm. where we were trained by our parents mm. to be of exemplary character. Mm. So the home training helped the you. The home training mm. helped us mm. to maintain standards mm. of conduct, mm. high standards of conduct. Mm. And that is why, and coupled with the fact that there are rules and regulations, mm. rules and regulations are meant to be observed. Mm to be adhered to. Mm. And if you fail to observe so, such rules, or if you violate the mm. rules, mm. 
we should be punished. Mm. Why is the role of people like Sardona and other senior civil servants of the why is it always a feature in trying to show how the system worked? It was he a big factor, the lead the leader in, in, in yeah, those settings. The Sardona, the Tafa Tava Tafa Belewa, the Dora Tafa Belewa are men of exemplary character. They were trained teachers, mm. and you know, they both came from excellent backgrounds, mm. and they impart mm. the knowledge that they acquired mm. to others, and they demonstrated the qualities mm. of exemplary leadership. D did you have any dealings with them, any of them? Uh, well, I was very young, yeah. you know, mm. then yes. I was a very... A junior mm. officer, mm. but uh, we learned a lot from mm. them. Yeah, we heard of mm. what they were doing. Mm. So, when you went to the federal service, yeah, uh, how is your experience there? This is Lagos from Kaduna, it's in Lagos yes. from Kaduna to Lagos. Yes, and I was posted to the federal Ministry of education. Mm. Uh, I was assistant secretary. Mm. Uh, from the Federal Ministry of Education, I uh, went to the Ministry of Establishments, from Ministry of Establishments to the Ministry of Labor, mm. and then to the Ministry of Finance, mm. uh, before transferring my services to the back to Bernard Plateau State mm. at the request mm. of uh, the first. Uh, Governor, mm. military governor of Benaplato State. Yeah. Uh, just at Gombo. Yes. How do you compare the Northern Service with the Federal Service of those days? Actually, both services were were excellent mm. because um, in the Northern Region. The service, the civil service was built by the colonial administration mm. and the standard was extremely high. Mm. And you know, when Nigeria attained independence, mm. there were, before Nigeria attained independence, mm. there were regional, there were three regions. Mm. Uh, northern Nigeria or northern region, mm. western region, uh, eastern region. Mm. These regions were not directly under the control of the federal government. Mm. So they had their own services mm. and these services were established by the colonial mm. administration. Mm. So the standard mm. was extremely high. Yeah. And so when we got to the federal service, mm. there was no difference. You could cope very well. We would cope yeah. very well. But was Lagos a strange experience for you coming from the north? Was it, did you fit into the Lagos I, cosmopolitan environment? I was, I was doing very well mm. in the military, I mean, in, in, in the federal service. Right. But I had to come back mm. at the request mm. of uh, Governor Gomo mm. because he needed some administrative officers mm. to strengthen mm. the administrative service mm. in Venezuela yeah. State. Yes, and he didn't. When he came to the state, there were no uh, many yes. administrative officers, yes. so, so he, he had to bring some of us. Mm from the Federal Civil Service mm. to the State Service yes. to strengthen yes. the administrative service. And you came the... here, became permanent secretary. Will you say that uh, the deterioration of the civil service started with state creation, when there are so many states created and the few experienced people like you were all distributed to your state of origin to help run the states? I want you to 
Remember, I said I started my career mm. in the civil service mm. in northern Nigeria. Mm. And I transferred my services to the federal government. Mm. It was at the request of Gombo that I came back. Yes, to yes. That to strengthen the service mm. because we were the same people mm. that went to the federal service yes. that were brought back to mm. the new states yes. in order to impart the knowledge we acquired yes. to those who were just starting yes. the service. But uh, I'm saying, are you able to carry this tradition of excellence yes. of the Northern Regional Service and the Federal Service into the state services. Precisely. Because I, my, my thinking is that there are so many states now yes. and fewer mm. capable people like you. Yes, but you see, after the creation of the first 12 states, mm. there was another exercise that increased mm. the number of the states mm. and you see at that point some of us had already left mm. the service mm. those that started the new states were not as fortunate as we were mm. they did not acquire much experience mm. before coming on board. Mm. Some of them were appointed permanent secretaries mm. without adequate experience. Mm. And they were the people to assist the government of the day mm. in the formulation and implementation of policies. Mm. And their experience was limited. Mm. And that is where the trouble started. Mm. You have a political man, mm. you have a, a person who is your political head, head mm as a commissioner. Mm. He had never been in the service mm. and yet he was put as your head, your political head. Mm. And you, who was supposed to advise him, mm. didn't acquire adequate experience. Mm. So you see that would be a problem. Yeah. So did you have a problem being a permanent secretary in Benue Plateau because of this kind of issues? No, we mm. didn't because actually some of us mm that came to Benue Plateau said mm. were in the state service mm. already mm. but transferred they had as aspired I mean they had acquired mm. experience mm. as officers in the defunct northern Nigeria. Mm. So they were continuing mm. with the service. So they, they had the experience mm. to help yeah. their administration. Yes. What kind of leader was JD Gomwak? Well, he was a man of exemplary character. Mm. He was a very competent officer. Mm. He was indeed incorruptible. Mm. Because I worked with him. Mm. As a pub, his, he was my permanent secretary. As governor, he also had the he, he also held the portfolio mm. of land and survey. As permanent secretary? When, when I was permanent secretary, mm. I was serving under two commissioners. Mm. And the governor was also my, my commissioner, okay. so to speak. For land? For land and right. survey. Mm. Because of the sensitivity mm. of land mm. and uh, survey. Mm. And then another person mm. was my commissioner for works. Mm. So by virtue, by virtue of my position as permanent secretary, responsible to the governor, mm. directly, I came very close to him. Mm. And uh, I found him to be a trustworthy man. Mm. Were you surprised by later developments why he was associated with a coup and then lost his life? When he left, mm. uh, the, I've forgotten the amount that mm. was found in his account. Mm. Very little sum of money. Mm. And considering 
what he did for mm. the state. Mm. Because he's a man who made sure that uh, development was spread mm. in the 12 local administrations mm. of Benue Plateau State. Mm. He was not corrupt. Mm. So I cannot understand mm. why a man like this mm. could be involved mm. in the uh, I mean, why he should even lose his life? Mm. For what reason? I mm. don't know. Mm. But I, to be honest with you, mm. this this man mm. was a man of unquestionable integrity. Mm. Integrity. Yeah, you moved when you are, when Gongola was created. After you know, you moved there as now a very senior permanent secretary. Mm. Indeed. Is it the same or is it is a continuation of what I'm saying, the deterioration of the service? More no, states, well, the, the, less the, capab capable people to run it? Actually, even in, the, in Gongola, actually, mm. um, the situation wasn't bad. Mm. I went there, I was one of the, one of the new permanent secretaries, mm. even though I was a permanent secretary before going to Gongola. Mm. There, I was the first permanent secretary, mm. Ministry of uh, Education. Mm. My colleague, who also attended the administrative service training course, popularly known as ADO, mm. Abuba Kargiri, mm. was also a permanent secretary. Mm. But before we met again, mm. because we, he was in Adamawa and I was in uh, Benue Province, mm. But following the creation of the state, mm. I, I belong to Karaba State, mm. I mean, Adamawa. The, the Benue Plateau, mm, yes. while he was in Losis. Mm. Well, it was the creation of the 12 states mm. that brought Adamawa and parts of Benue Plateau and other and Sardona mm. together mm. as Gongola State. Yes. So, we, there, there were people with experience mm. that were able to uh, keep mm. the service mm. going. Yeah. So I would say that uh, the standard wasn't yeah. bad. The standard was still mm. high. Yeah. What of when Taraba now was also created from out from out from out of Gongola State? Well, another. And other. then at that point, actually. Many people had already left mm. the experience ones. Mm. And uh, those who succeeded, mm. those who left, mm. did not have the advantage mm. of uh, the kind of experience mm. gained by those before them. Mm. That is when we started having some problems. Yes. You move from the civil service into politics yes. and became the first deputy governor yes. of uh, Taraba State yes. and uh, Governor Jole Inyami. Yes. Was that a strange experience as a civil servant who is used to order and uh, rules? It, it, it is. Mm. Well, it was a different kettle of fish. <laughs> Why did you choose that path? First of all, I didn't want to go into politics mm. because I saw politics as a dirty game. Mm. When we were in the service, we mm. saw what some politicians were doing. Mm. We were not happy. Mm. But we came from the civil service background. Mm. We are guided by rules and regulations. Mm. We have the code of um, code of Mm. So, but in politics, when I went into politics and I now became a participant in politics mm. and I saw what was going into politics, mm. I wasn't quite happy mm. because rules were not observed. Mm. Even where there are rules and regulations, Such rules and regulations are not adhered to, mm. and that leads to corruption. Mm. And that is why, as a deputy governor, 
I was not happy mm. because of what was being done. Mm. Even though there were rules and regulations mm. that forbid the, commit, uh, the, 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 the commission of s some of the things that mm. were being done. So what did you do? Well, I did my best to offer advice. Mm. But I wasn't the head. Mm. There's a difference between what the head, who had the final say, mm. can do, mm. and what a man under him mm. can do. Mm. And that is why we had this problem. But we thank God that in spite of all this, we able to manage mm. the affairs of the government. Mm. So you survived as a deputy governor for at least uh, yes. until... Uh, In fact, we didn't survive, we were removed mm. by, by the Abacha administration. Yes, it was a short tenure. Because I was in office as a deputy governor for one year, 11 months. Mm. And I remember I went to Israel mm. on a pilgrimage, mm. but when we were descending the Mount Olives, mm. one of the sites yes. in Jerusalem, I stripped and fell mm. and uh, had to go to the United Kingdom in mm. London. Mm for treatment mm. and uh, while I was there to be operated on mm. there was a coup mm. there was a change of government mm. which brought General Bacha mm. to power mm. as the military head of state mm. but I think later on yeah, the Reverend Jolie Inyami made, an, made a comeback. He, he came back to power. Yes. W why didn't you also feel no, like going back? back to mm. go back. Mm. I, I would rather... At that time, actually, I was uh, about 50-something. Mm. I became the deputy governor at the age of 57, I think. Mm. And I don't want to go into politics mm. again. Mm. I had been a career civil servant. Mm. I had built a reputation. Mm. And I didn't want to mar my reputation mm. again. Mm. And that is why I decided not to go. Mm. Viewers, we take a break here. You have heard the experiences of uh, Dr. Ghani in public service and as politician which he didn't seem to have liked too much uh, when we return we'll go into other aspects of his life that are more to do with social community and his personal experiences in life join us again in the second part of this program thank you Welcome back uh, to our <coughs> reminiscence with Dr. Samuel Njuma Ghani here in Jos. Uh, when we left uh, a few minutes ago, we were talking about uh, his various roles in the civil service where he moved to Gongolo State as permanent secretary in various ministries, ultimately as acting power as a secretary to the state government, and then a brief stint in the federal service again before he retired and became a politician. Uh, and of course he said so much about how much he was happy his career in politics was a very short one. So I want to come to this point where now we are out of politics, you are a community leader. Uh, what does that mean? What were you doing as community leader? I know one or two things about chairing the 
the governing board of Kwararafa University, which is a community initiative. Mm -hmm. But what, 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 what else is your role as a community leader? Well, as a community leader, my people come to me from time to time to consult me on issues that affect the welfare of our people. Uh, using my past experience uh, in the affairs of men, in the civil service, I am always available <laughs> to offer them such advice. But you are sitting here in Jos. How much community involvement will you have in, in Wukari? Jesus. When I go home from time to time, mm. they call me on telephone. Mm. And uh, that is how we communicate with them. Yeah. How, yeah. Was the, how was the university set up? It's a very expensive venture. Yes. Well, it is a community-based university, mm. the first of its kind in Nigeria. Mm. There is a difference between a community-based mm. university and a private university. Mm. A private university is run mm. by an individual mm. or a corporate body. Mm. But the community university is run mm. by a committee set up by that community mm. to look into the affairs mm. of, of the community you know, community based university. Mm. The chairman of the committee mm. is the Akuka. Mm. The the paramount ruler. Paramount ruler mm. of the area. Mm. He is uh, the visitor mm. to the university. Mm. But the community also, the, the, the university also has a board of trustees. Mm. A, mem a member of the board of trustees. Mm. You are the chair of the board of I'm trustees. I'm the chair, sorry, I'm the mm. chairman of the board of trustees. Yes. And this appointment is for, for life. For life. Yes, mm. all the members mm. of the community, their mm. acquaintances mm. Are, are for life. Mm. And so we depend on the goodness of people, mm. of uh, organizations mm. to help us mm. run uh, the university. Mm. The university Indeed, indeed, is a, a very expensive venture, mm. but by the grace of God, mm. we are running this university. The university was established uh, in 2005, mm. it was approved by the federal government in mm. 2005 and started operation. Mm. 2006, mm. and we have graduated about six or so sets of gra sets of graduates. Mm. So it is a community based university, mm. in spite of the fact that it is expensive, mm. but the Lord is helping us. Mm. I think everybody knows that the probably the most prominent and richest person from from your area uh, is General Danjuma. Yeah. Does he have something to do and we know that he has a foundation and he's a very generous donor. Yes. Do you do you get a lot from him to run the university? Yes. Well, he has been helping the university. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Mm. The general has been helping the university. Mm. Yes. Yes. And, and is the community really able to levy itself and, and, and do some of the that some of the things that needs to be done? Yeah, well, communities are doing their best, you mm. know, making contribution. Mm. But as you know, uh, the community, I mean, running a community university mm. is an, it's not an easy task. Mm. But the community is not doing badly. Mm. 
What else do you do? Are you involved in, in the traditional system, the aquacus, you know, palace and all those things? No, I am not. Mm. I come from one of the two ruling houses mm. in Wukhari. Mm. We have two ruling houses. Mm. The present Aku mm. is from my own ruling house and mm. is my cousin. Mm. But I have not taken any title. Mm. I am a Christian mm. and I operate strictly according to the Christian principles. Mm. But that does not mean that a Christian cannot be the Aku. Mm. This is a matter of choice. Mm. It's my own decision mm. not to participate mm. in what is purely traditional. Mm. But that does not mean that I'm not involved. Yeah, but some of the rights, even we outsiders, when we see them, mm. they look quite uh, uh, mysterious, if I may say so. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know to what extent that is right. From, from the outside, they look mysterious. I mean, there have been uh, the recent uh, death and the appointment of the new Aku. Yeah, they well, are, that you know, is a traditional way mm. of quote, installing the Aku. Is that what you object to, all these things? No, so I don't object to that. Yes. No, that's not, that's not at all. Mm. I have no objection to that. Mm. So this, uh, this is purely traditional. Mm. It has been there from time mm. immemorial. Yeah. So there is nothing wrong with that. Mm. But there's no chances of you becoming the Aku, no, even don't. though you are from the. No, mm. you know. Even I in your younger days, you didn't, uh, you didn't, you didn't <laughs> aspire to that, <laughs> because they say princes are always eyeing that thing. Yes. Mm. But there are some princes that I would not like to to take that office. Mm. Mm. Um, you mentioned your Christian principles. Yeah. Is that behind your involvement in the Nigerian Christian Elders Council? Yes. What What was the aim of that group? And why, why? See, the group actually, uh, the, the group uh, deal with issues. Mm affecting the church mm. and the nation. Mm. You see, the group, the objective of the group mm. is to see that things are done properly. Mm. That even government mm. should be run on the basis of justice mm. and fairness. Mm. And that the rules governing the conduct of the church mm. as strictly adhered to. Mm. That is the work of the National Christian Elders Forum, mm. of which I am the chairman. Mm. I became the chairman about a year or so ago mm. in succession to Mr. Asimoto. Mm. Yes, yes. I, I am. Mm. But you, you, you don't seem to you, say or do much. It's only occasionally that one hears a statement coming from you. Well, when there is need mm. to make statement, mm. we do it. Okay. We don't just make statement for the sake yes. of making statement. Yes. Where the government is not doing something right, mm. or any organization mm. is not doing something right, mm. That is when we come out to speak. Mm. You have been critical of this government, of the Buhari government, of its appointments and all that. Uh, do you think your criticism has helped to change things? No, we are not critical of everything mm. Buhari does. Yes. But because we are running a federation, mm. Therefore, appointments mm. to civil service position, political appointments, mm. should reflect the, spread, the geographical spread mm. of the nation, mm. should reflect the diversity mm. 
of the nation. Mm. That's all we stand for. Mm. Whether it is Buhari mm. or any other person mm. that is in power, we want people to run the government according to the provisions of the Constitution. Mm. Do you think this is being done now? I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. Mm. Because if you look at the civil service appointments, mm. or even in the military, mm. appointments do not reflect mm. the geographical spread mm. of the nation, mm. the diversity of the nation. Mm. Appointments seem to be lopsided mm. in, face, in favor mm. of some to the detriment of others. Mm. People are surprised that uh, General Njuma, who is close to Buhari, is also really in your group, rather than uh, somebody who can go and, and indeed say, look to Buhari, that look, this should be done. So there is even speculation, is he really part of the group or is just his name that is being used? Well, but who says that then Njuma is not advising uh, uh, Buhari? Mm. They are very close. Mm. I think Adanjua and Buhari are closer than it may be you. Mm, of course. You may rise. Buhari may be closer to you than to you. But there is no, I cannot say why mm. Buhari is not taking advice mm. from Adanjua. Mm. But I know that Adanjua and Buhari. Mm. Uh, close, and I'm sure as military officers uh, before now, they are actually interacting mm. with each other. Mm. I cannot say more on this mm. because I really don't know how much mm. advice he is offering. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but the surprise is that he's in your group. Is he in your group? If if he's able to have access to the government, yeah. why be in a group that will issue a statement and say, look, this is not going well, you should do this? But we are doing the same thing. Yeah, he is a member of the group, but he has not uh, been attending regularly. Mm. Yes. Yeah. But he is he's, he's a member of the group. Yes. Right. And do you think there is a possibility with the new set up the new the election coming up that will have something that suits your own idea of a gov good government better. Do you have hope in this arrangement uh, of the politics? Well, as a Christian, mm. I have been praying that God will give us a mm. man after his own mm. heart. Mm. We look at the outward mm. appearance. Mm. But the Lord look, looks at the heart. Mm. So my prayer mm. is that God give us a man mm. after your own heart, mm. a man who is God fearing, mm. a man who is righteous, a man who is tr truthful, mm. a man who is above corruption. Mm. I know that the primary responsibility of any leader mm. is the well being of the people. Mm. And I want people, a, a, a leader mm. that will be caring. Mm. A, a leader who sees the running of government not as a means of amassing wealth, mm. not as a means of exercising political power mm. only, but see it as a tremendous responsibility. Mm. Did your group take a position on the Muslim Muslim ticket? We are, we are against that. Mm. Because Nigeria is a diverse country. Mm. Nigeria is not an Islamic country. Mm. Nigeria is not a Christian country. Mm. But there are Muslim and Christians mm. and their brothers. Mm. And the Constitution guarantees mm. the rights mm. of the citizens of the country. Mm. I feel that 
the sharing of political positions, mm. particularly those of the president and vice president, mm. should reflect the diversity, religious diversity, political, uh, 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 cultural diversity. Mm. And that is why I am not in favor mm. of uh, Muslim, Muslim, mm. Let's because look at it will not bring yeah, peace. Uh, a little away from politics. Let's look at your uh, private life. Uh, at what point you are moving from one position to the other? At what point did you get married and started having a family yourself? Well, <laughs> I got married in 1957. Mm. My wife and I are married for 65 years. Wow. Hmm. We were married for 65 years hmm. and we are blessed with six children, hmm. two of whom are dead. We have two boys hmm. and two girls hmm. still living hmm. and we have grandchildren hmm. and uh, most of them have graduated. Even the grandchildren? Both in the country <laughs> and outside the country. Mm. So, what do you? How do you? What do you do in retirement? You've been retired for more than thirty years. Did you go into business to survive and do a few odd things? Yes, well, we do uh, business, you mm. know. But you know, at this age, mm. there's no strength mm. to do any active business. Mm. But uh, we are still doing some few things. We will do a little mining. Mm. You know. We want to go into mining. We mm. know that we are doing it, but mm. we are trying to mm. do some mining. Mm. Um, just to keep ourselves going. Mm. Do you travel a lot? Uh, in this well, age? in those days, yes, yes, we did. We used to, but not now. Mm. Because the strength yeah, but yes, the responsibility is still there. You are chairman of the board of yeah. Fadisu Ukari. Yes, I do. You are well, the chairman of the National Christian Elders. For You have to yeah. probably go to Lagos yeah. or Abuja. Yes, mm. I do travel mm. to Abuja. Mm. Yes, to, to Lagos. Mm. But not yeah. abroad anymore. No, not abroad. Mm. Well, for it's quite some time. Mm. We have not been abroad for mm. quite some time. Mm. My wife and I used to be uh, the most traveled <laughs> because the nature of my work, mm. she was a tourism officer. Oh, she was? Yeah. Mm. And uh, before she, she retired before me, mm. you know, you're not, not on age, mm. but uh, uh, she had children to take care. To take care. Mm. And so she decided to retire voluntarily. Mm. But I retired at the age of retirement. Mm. So you had a tourism officer at home who were arranging your, your trips. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, so, what, do, what do you do day to day this day as a retiree? Is there anything you do to keep uh, well, uh, active? I do. I read a lot. Mm. I also, I am a member of, uh, of the, uh, what is the other? I'm a member of the board, of a uh, member of the trustees mm. of my own Christian organization. Mm. And uh, I do attend in the meeting mm. of the board from time to time. Mm. And there's also an annual meeting mm. of, the, of the Supreme uh, Body, mm. the General Church Council. Mm. From time to time, yeah, and I do. Which church is this? Uh, Christian Reform Church of Christian Reform Church, Nigeria. Right. Yeah. What about the day when you wake up during the day? Do you any exercises to keep yes, the fit? Walk. Yeah. Yes, I hmm. just walk. Hmm. And uh, well, I I do drive. Hmm. <laughs> even though. 
I'm careful not to drive it because uh, if I hit somebody, <laughs> uh, you know, it will be the talk of the town. Yes, you know. at 88, yeah? <laughs> yes. But is there anything you do that you think has contributed to keeping you healthy and alert, even, even in this great age? Well, I am. Um, one thing we do, both my wife and I, mm. we do pray mm. a lot. Mm. And we try to do what we feel is acceptable mm. to the Lord. Mm. Uh, we want to operate. Mm. Maybe as a Muslim, you will not understand. Mm. In this, uh, we want to operate in the spirit of mm. the Lord. Mm. We want to practice. Uh, loving people, you mm. know, we want to love people, mm. we want to uh, we, we, we don't want to do anything mm. to hurt mm. people. Mm. We want to interact with people mm. in an atmosphere of peace mm. and uh, understanding. We don't want any problem. Mm. We don't want to to be involved in any violence, mm. anything that is violent. Mm. We feel we should distance mm. ourselves mm. from it. We want to live at peace mm. with everybody. Do you have Muslim friends? Very much. Most of my friends are Muslims. Mm. They have good friends. Mm. I told you. Mm. Yeah, is here, he's mm. my age group. Mm. We met not a few days ago. Mm. So I have more than friends. Mm. I have brothers mm. who are Muslim. For the family. In the family. Mm. My sisters are Muslim. Mm. So in the family you have Christians, mm. you have Muslims. Mm. I don't discriminate. I brought up. Mm. My sister's mm. children mm. who are Muslim, mm. I train them up to university level. Mm. So I don't, uh, yeah. I don't discriminate. Yeah. Does the diet of your area help to keep people busy? I hear about the Kunu Acha and stuff like that. Oh, well, <laughs> you, know, you know, we don't grow Acha mm. in our area. Yeah, but. You use it a lot. Yes, mm. we take it because it is healthy. Mm. I have stopped taking soft drink mm. a number of years ago. Mm. I don't take alcohol. Mm. I don't. In fact, I stopped drinking alcohol at the age of, I think, 13. 30. 13. 13? One, three. Wow. So, mm. I. I have not been taking alcohol, mm. neither the Burkutu, mm. the locally brewed mm. beer mm. or year, mm. or uh, hot drinks, mm. whiskey. Mm. Uh, well, I take uh, grape juice, mm. but not alcoholic. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Ghani, for this very interesting uh, recounting of your life. Uh, viewers, I hope uh, you enjoyed that, uh, you know, experience like I did. Mm. And I hope we wish you sir, a very long life and more contribution to the country. Yes. And uh, viewers, I thank you for joining us on this edition and I hope we see you another time.